Hello and welcome or welcome back. Today I've got a very quick one for you. I was working on the puzzle game that I teased in my last shader video, which I'm going to link up here and down there. It involves the player typing guesses into a line edit node and by default Godot doesn't give you functionality to restrict what they can and can't type into that field. So we want to come up with a solution on our own. Let me show you what we're working with. So very straightforward, right? You're shown an image a couple lines at a time, and then you type in what you think you see. The problem is, out of the box, I can add all these characters that are never going to be in the answer. So we want to be able to restrict those. Now, like I said, although Godot doesn't have a built-in option for this, although I think it probably should, it does have the building blocks for us to write this logic ourselves. So let me take you through the solution. I've got this line edit as a child of this text entry control that is going to wrap some logic together for me. So if we jump over to that, what we've got here is, uh, I had commented this out to show you the text input by default. If I uncomment it, you'll see the logic. Now, if I try to type hyphens, I get nothing, pluses, but I can do numbers, I can do spaces, and I can type my name, apparently. I, that was just <laughs> muscle memory. So how does this work? The text change signal fires every time that text changes, unsurprisingly, and it passes in the string that is in the field currently, and then what we're going to do is pass it in to this regular expression object, and then we're going to match it against this pattern, which tells the regex what characters we're allowing. In this case, all the letters, numbers 0 through 9, and a space. Uh, regex is a huge topic and a deep rabbit hole you can go down. I will leave a link down below if you want to learn more about those. For today, all you need to understand is this is the pattern that will allow us to do numbers, letters, and a space, which is all we want in our guesses. I'm going to come back to this line in a second. Then what we do here is we run a search on the string based on this pattern, and it's going to return everything that matches that pattern and discard anything that doesn't. So then we'll loop through the things that passed or match that pattern, add them to this empty word string, and whatever comes out the other side is going to be our valid input. Then we're going to set the text in that field to whatever was valid. We're going to push it to upper just because I think it looks better as uppercase. And then, uh, you know, we emit a signal that the text has changed. And then we're going to bubble up anything that is approved to this puzzle class that is going to be responsible for checking against our correct answers. It's not doing anything right now because I'm not at that point. So let me come back to this and talk about this line and this line and also why this works at all. You might think, well, why don't I see these characters that are being disallowed because effectively they're, they are being typed. But because that signal fires so quickly and, and runs this loop, you, the user will never actually see them. As soon as you type a character that is disallowed, it's going to get deleted before they can even see it which is where this comes in. This line here is to make sure that we're keeping the caret exactly where we left it off, even after something's been deleted. So this diff variable, which is the difference between the length of the string we start with and the string we end with, um, is only ever gonna be zero or one. Because this event fires after every single input, we're only ever going to be deleting one character at a time, unless we pasted something in, but I'm not going to worry about that for this simple a game. So this will be either zero or one. It'll be zero if we've deleted nothing, and it'll be one if what is returned is one character less than the original string, meaning we've removed an invalid character. So we make that comparison. And then down here, after we change the contents of the, the whole field back to what was accepted, we're setting our caret back to where it was initially, but then we're adding either one or zero to it. And we're adding one when something's deleted so that we put it, well, let me show you. If I comment this field out and run this, and we type, you see how the caret's at the beginning instead of the end? That's because we type, we clear it, and then we paste this back in, essentially. So first of all, we need this old caret 
position to put it back at the end, which is where it started. So now if I do this, the caret stays at the end. But the problem is if I go here and I type an invalid character, I'm going to try to enter a slash, you'll see the caret bumps one position to the right each time because we're actually deleting that character and now the old position is changed by one. So we want to add that one back in after we've deleted it and that will keep it right where we want it. So now if I do that and try to enter an invalid character, it stays put like we'd expect. I may at some point clean this up a little bit and throw this capability into my game template, which I will link up here and down here. Um, I do have a fairly sizable update to that coming in the next couple of weeks. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing so that you don't miss that. And if you have questions about this or anything else, please feel free to join the Discord and come ask us questions, show us what you're working on. We would love to have you. In the meantime, please be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I will see you in one of these videos up here. Take care.